What's going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers. We haven't talked basketball in a minute, and I want to do a kind of a quick primer show with this, the host holiday break coming up. Got a game tonight at 8 o'clock. Um, let's talk a little basketball, including one player not named Connor that needs to get some more shots up. All that and more today is Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every day, multiple times a day, kind of depending on, on what we have going on. Um, we haven't talked basketball in a minute, and it's not because we're forgotten about it. They just haven't played a game in a while. Um, but they're still kicking it back off tonight at 8 o'clock. And I really kind of wanted to sit down, talk about a couple um, big things that, that are in my head about this basketball team coming off that break, kind of coming up to what's happening next. Uh, let's start here. We talked early in the year about is this team deeper or is it just a different cast of bodies, right? If you remember last year's team, the big issue, one of the big issues was the depth and the depth hurt Wisconsin in a big, big point uh, in March Madness, obviously, right? We had the huge ankle injury to Chucky Hepburn and there's just nobody there uh, to step up for him. Nobody even you, it's not about because I, I heard someone else say, well, well, Ryan, like any any team is going to suffer when their starting point guard gets hurt. It's not about is there no drop off? It's about there was nobody to come in and just keep the wheels from falling off. Right. You need depth to survive a season. And I think as we've seen so far with this team is that depth just probably isn't there this year. But this is the game to look for because we've had a long break here. This is the game to look, can this staff over this long break, did they find somebody off that bench that they can plug in and, and get some extra minutes for, right? That's that's what I think is going to be really interesting to watch in tonight's game because you basically have a seven-man rotation right now, right? It's the starters, then it's Connor and Carter Gilmore. That's your seven-man rotation. Can we get one more body in here that makes sense, whether that's Kamari McGee, who's averaging six minutes a game, Isaac Lindsay, 5.9 minutes a game. Marcus Silver, 5.1 minutes a game. It has to be one of those guys because, quite frankly, Gilmore doesn't give you much offensively at all. Outside of offensive rebounding, which I'm going to talk about in a second, he doesn't give you anything. He's shooting woefully bad. 30% from the uh, free throw line, 22% from three. He's, he's kind of an offensive black hole. So you essentially have a six-man rotation offensively. It's not enough. Right. If, if the aspirations for this team is to, to make a run and to really maybe get into the Sweet 16, you're not going to make it through a season realistically without anybody getting hurt or anybody getting dinged up. So finding maybe one more body that can come off the bench and give you 10 minutes, 12 minutes, it's a huge deal. And I think it has to come from either Lindsay, uh, it has to come from Ilver, or it has to come from Kamari McGee. So coming off this big break, you know, does the coaching staff, does Greg Gard, do they feel like one of those players, they can kind of start counting on them for 10, 12 minutes a game? Because if they do, that's huge. That's a huge benefit to this team. It's going to keep guys fresher. It's going to well, allow them to withstand some runs. It's going to, you know, let, let them play better in clutch moments because Chucky Everett's not going to have to carry the offense the entire game because Tyler Wall's not going to have to carry the team the entire game. So that's the number one thing I'm looking for in this game tonight against Western Michigan at 8 o'clock. Do we see Kamari McGee get 10, 12 minutes? Do we see Ilver get a little bit more run? Very excited to see that. Um, my next big thought is uh, there's a there's a guard, there's a player on this team that needs more shots, and his name isn't necessarily Connor Sejan. It's uh, Max Max Klesman. Klesman needs more shots, and some of that's on him. Some of that's on the coaching staff. Like he's been reticent to shoot several times where they swing the ball and he's open and he he kind of hesitates. He pump fakes. He drives in or he kicks it around again. He's got to shoot more. He's a really good shooter. They brought him in here to shoot the ball. He's shooting 42% from three. That's third on the team. And yet his three-point attempts are fifth on the team, right? His usage rate is 11.4%, which usage rate basically means the uh, percentage of times that um, when you're on playing offense, you end up making the play, um, whether it's the pass or the shot. 11.4% usage rate is insanely small for a starting two guard, which Max Klesman is. Uh, just for reference, 11.4% puts him behind Isaac Lindsay. It puts him behind John, uh, Jordan Davis. So – you know, some of that's on Klesman. He has to be more aggressive because the shot is there. But some of it's on the coaching staff realizing that, you know, this is one of our best shooters. Um, we have to force him to shoot more. And that means the efficiency is probably going to fall, which is fine. 
you know, if he takes three, two or three more three pointers a game and he goes from shooting 43% to 37%, that's a win. Like that's a, that's, that's a win for the Badgers. So um, getting him to shoot the ball more is something that I think is really important for this team. And then the last one I want to kind of focus in on in terms of what are we looking at for the second half of the season? What are we looking at coming out of this uh, big break is what does Connor Seijin look like after taking that kind of long extended holiday break off his breakout freshman, you know, early, early season breakout year um, guys averaging 22 minutes a game. I think that's going to tick up, right? I think he's going to be more 25, 26, 27 minutes a game, 30 minutes a game down the stretch. You know, for reference, uh, Jordan Davis is averaging 25 minutes a game. So I think Connor has to play more because he is really the best outside shooter on the team. He's one of the best uh, overall scorers on the team. You know, he does some unique stuff um, in terms of just free throw attempts, too. He's fourth on the team in three free throw attempts per 40 minutes. You know, he's ahead of Chucky Hepburn in that in that sense. It's because he cuts well, he gets to the rim. And when he gets there, he's a killer. I mean, 17 to 17 from the free throw line. He's an absolute killer. So I'm interested to see what he looks like. Uh, kind of coming into this second half of the basketball season. You know, I don't think he's going to hit a freshman wall. I'm curious, are they going to start even giving him more opportunities to maybe in in situations initiate the offense a little bit? I don't think he's a, ready to be a point guard right now, but I think he can maybe um, handle the ball a little bit more situationally. So I'm interested in that. Um, and then we're going to get into some of your comments as well. Again, this is just a quick show, but just some of the things I'm looking out for. Today's show is brought to you by Bill Barr. Built Bar remains just the number one source for basically all my healthy protein bars, nutritional snacks. Um, and we have to try some of their new flavors because they constantly come out with new flavors, great new stuff. I'm talking uh, coconut brownie topper, cookie dough topper, uh, coconut brownie, white chocolate peppermint granola. It's Built's take on a, a granola bar, and it's more filling and still insanely tasty. Um, they do incredible stuff. They are delicious, protein-filled, low-sugar and if you haven't tried one before, they are the best protein bars ever. I use them. My kids eat them. I kind of hide them so my kids don't raid them. But when they eat them, I know it's a healthy snack that gives them protein. So it's kind of like a hidden dad win. And I'm not kidding. Like these flavors are incredible. They taste like a candy bar, but you're getting tons of protein. Um, and they're all my favorites. So we have a great offer for you on Built Bar. They're all different. You can order the mix box and try all the new flavors for yourself. You got to try this. Get 15% off your order right now using the code LOCKEDON15 at Built.com. That's LOCKEDON15 at Built.com. All right, let's take a couple of your quick comments. And again, this is a quick show. Uh, we're probably going to talk again after the game. <coughs> um, so I just wanted to talk about some of the things to look for. Uh, but we do have Adam Otto said, love it. Uh, you're really killing my productivity during the workday. Ah, it's all right, Adam. This is Listen, nothing's more important than Badger sports. Your, work, your adult job can wait. Um, appreciate the support. Logan Couch says, uh, this is going to be an easy one for the Badgers. I mean, we moved up two spots in the rankings without even playing. This should be an easy win. But again, I think these are some of the most interesting games to watch because it allows Greg Guard to kind of manipulate his lineup a little bit, try some new things. And we get a long break to see what maybe they evaluated and what they're going to try going forward. So I'm really interested just to see that. Do we see anything different? And again, it comes down to the rotations. Do we see extended time for Hodges even I, I don't think Hodges is in the plans this year but if we're going to see him it's going to be this game right and that's the same with Lindsey McGee um, Marcus Silver if we're going to see any of those guys if they plan on having any of those guys for the stretch run we're going to see it probably right now okay so that's what I'm really interested in seeing uh, Max Farron comes in and says the same thing I'd like to see more Hodges he could end up being someone who needs to take on a bigger role if Crowell or Wall gets injured or in foul trouble yes and it goes back to my depth issue, right? This team doesn't have the depth to survive injuries or foul trouble. So you need one of those guys off the bench to really step up. And it needs to kind of start manifesting itself tonight. Because if it doesn't, then it just probably isn't there this year, unfortunately. And it just is what it is. You know, <coughs> you can't force it. So, all right. Let's take a couple more um, comments, a couple more things I wanted to talk about here. You know, uh, one of the other things to really track this this second half of the season is Chucky Hepburn is shooting 34% inside the arc. Now, is that a slump? Or my theory is a little bit it has to do with the fact that last year, the bigger, taller, better defensive perimeter guys on the other team were guarding Johnny Davis. And now those guys are guarding Chucky Hepburn. I think that has to do a lot with his struggles. And there's no solving that, right? Hepburn is a really good player, shooting the ball really well from three this year. But he is a little athletically limited. He's not big. I think he's going to struggle a little bit at the rim until he can figure it out a little bit. And 
I don't think there's an easy fix for that. Um, Kamari McGee is someone I'm interested in seeing. He's second on the team uh, behind Stephen Corral, who's a great passer. He's second on the team with 4.2 assists for 40 minutes. I'd like to see him get a little bit more run, but I'm excited for it, man. We haven't had a basketball game in a minute. So, again, that's just kind of a quick primer. We're probably going to talk after the game, but look for guys off the bench getting more minutes as a sign of one of those players. The coaching staff is really going to try to push up to solve some of the depth issues on this team. Look for maybe Max uh, Klesman getting some more looks because he's a really good shooter, but he just doesn't shoot enough. He's not used enough. And then look for how maybe uh, Connor Seijin is going to be used in the second half. So on Wisconsin, we're going to keep talking to you guys. Um, Enjoy the game tonight. We're going to talk after it. And uh, let's go. Let's keep it going.